everybody, welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Today we're back with another top 10 video for you guys. We have officially crossed the halfway mark of 2022, and we've had a lot of great figures from all kinds of lines. WWE Mattel, AEW Jazzwares. I mean, we're getting so many different lines from so many different companies of so many different talents that it's honestly overwhelming, but it's the best time to be a wrestling figure or action figure collector than any other time before. So we have done a top 10 WWE elites to this point, or top 10 WWE figures of the year to this point. I think it was a month ago, but a lot of people wanted to see the AEW side of that. So today we will be doing our top 10 AEW action figures of 2022 so far. Of course, at the end of the year, you know this, this list is going to change drastically, right? We have so many different releases coming by the end of the year. We will do our top 10 figures of the year at the end of the year or right after the new year. But 2022 is full of surprises. We have plenty of great figures coming. And who knows, all the great figures that we're getting just now or this year may surpass all of the figures that we have in this this top 10. However, man, I did want to give a shout out to some honorable mentions, and there's some honorable mentions that probably aren't even being honorably mentioned. But here we have Anna J from Unmatched Series 3, the Mox from the Deathmatch 2-pack, Barbar Deathmatch exploding, all the stuff. From Ringside Collectibles, you have the Unrivaled 9 Christian, you have the Unmatched Series 3 Stu Grayson, and you have the Unrivaled Series 8 Chuck, which is actually a pretty damn good figure. I just hate how skinny the arms are, man. They just, uh, and the head sculpt's not the best. It's just, it's just a fun figure. You know, you have fun with them all, but I wanted to have a little bit of an honorable honorable mention section before we get there, but all these figures are solid in their own right. Just missed the cut for the top 10, but let's dive into MDT's top 10 AEW action figures of 2022 so far. So coming in at my number 10 spot, I went with the AEW Unrivaled Series 9 Brian Cage figure. I think that, you know, first of all, I'm going to get this out of the way. I'm not the biggest Brian Cage fan. I've never been a huge fan of the guy. I think he's super athletic. He's a big dude. You know, he can move around in the ring. And I, I found to come to like him a lot more as he came into AEW and I got a little bit more exposure to him. But this figure is lacking a lot of details, I will be honest with you. But it still feels so good in the hand. And I know the head sculpts aren't the greatest ever, but the figure feels so good in the hand. That I, and it moves around so well for a big guy and it's just one of those figures you like to hold in your hand and pose around. I, that's probably the most simple description I can give you for the figure. It is lacking some details right? The white's supposed to be like, uh, it's supposed to have like this iridescent look to it. It's not the best head sculpts ever but it's still a really fun figure to pose around with and you guys know that posability and how good it feels in the hand is a big unit for me when it comes to ranking figures so this Brian Cage had to make my top 10 but he does get the 10 spot. You know, I, I could have I gave him a gift there, I lobbed it to him and he nailed it. This is a very fun figure. into the number nine spot we are staying in an AEW Unrivaled 9 with Thunder Rosa this figure is so fun man it's a great figure I love the face paint I love all the different hands we got the figure feels good in hand it poses really well you have her tattoo detail the face paint like I mentioned before not the best attire for the black and gold but I still think it looks just like her it's very fun to pose around like I said and it's probably if not top three it may be the best AEW women's figure we've gotten to date out of every single women's figure and it seems like every women's figure that we get like the next one and the next one and the next one it seems like they get better and better with each release which is very good as well which gives me very high hopes for jade coming in series four of the unmatched collection but this figure was a ton of fun i think it's going to be great can't wait to you know uh see what other releases we get but this figure is a ton of fun i thought it was great it had to come in at number nine i think it edged out brian cage and not only unrivaled nine which we never ranked on the channel but overall i, I like this figure a lot and i'm sad to say but this is the last women's figure on the countdown Coming in at our number 8 spot is going to be Unmatched Series 3 Evil Uno. Really enjoyed this figure a lot. I love the masked head sculpt. I like the sculpts that we have going on here. One thing that does set it back for me as I think it'd be a lot higher is if it wasn't so stiff. I feel like his legs are a bit stiff. I do like the sculpts that we have going on. His arms are a little stiff as well and he can't bend over that much as far as articulation but I still like the taped wrist how there are you know there is sculpt there on the arms. You get some nice sculpts going all the way down to his feet. You have the socks on there. Boots look good. It's a very aesthetically pleasing figure, right? It's toyetic. It's nice. And those reasons have Evil Uno at number eight. I like this guy a lot. He's got a great personality, and it comes across on the figure well, even though you can't see his face. I enjoy this figure, and I'm glad to have Evil Uno in the collection. 
Coming in at number seven is going to be Unrivaled Series number eight, Chris Jericho with this Painmaker face paint. It's got the Inner Circle shirt. This jacket is super highly detailed. You know, it probably would have been higher, but again, it's pretty, it's a lot more toyetic and it's a lot more pop going on with it, especially Mock. I think it's a beautiful figure, Mock. But I think, you know, since we've had so many Jericho releases, we've seen these black tights so many times. We've seen the jacket, not with the spikes, but we have seen a lot of jackets. We've seen the scarf. We've seen the hat. We've seen these things. It is just kind of a repaint, sort of. So for those reasons, I didn't want to put it too, too high, but it's still a really great figure. It's one of the better Jerichos you'll see. I really like the head sculpt. I'm trying to get a, a few of these. I've only seen this at retail like once or twice, so I am trying to get more of them. I have my men on card. I have my loose, but I would like to get more for that face paint to interchange with other figures, but this one was too good not to put into my number seven. I think it is better than the rest of the figures that we've seen so far. So that reason, Jericho comes in at number seven, but I know a lot of people are going to have this really high on their countdown for 2022 to so far. number six we do have Trent and Trent is one of my figures that a lot of people don't understand why I like it so much. It did come in at my number one spot for Unrivaled Series number eight and he's higher than Jericho here. He's higher than Evil Uno. He's higher than a lot of other figures. I just really like this figure. It feels really good in the hand. It poses well and I'm a big fan of Trent. I like the way his boots look. I just think I, I don't know. I really can't describe it man. A, a lot of what comes down to when I enjoy a figure is how good it feels in the hand. You know does it feel really smooth? Does it feel buttery smooth where I can pose it around and stuff like that so that's really where it comes down to i think it's a good head sculpt a lot of people don't like it but i think it looks just like him of course it is outdated now he is rocking the bald he's, he's he looks a lot different nowadays but at the same time this figure is great especially for a moment in time and it looks good up next to chuck taylor it's a fun figure and i like trent a lot so this came in at number six for me it's a fun figure and while i'm at it man you want to go down in the comment section below and leave me your personal top five top ten of aew figures so far this year there's been some bangers all right man so i tried to be fair coming in at number five we have the coffin drop ringside exclusive darby allen figure you guys know how much i love darby allen figures i think they're fantastic they are some of the best figures that jazzwares makes how good they feel in the hand how well they pose how well the likenesses and the tattoos and the face paint and all these different things darby allen's figures are so damn good but i try to be fair because it is just a repaint it's not a lot of stuff going on with it i did want to keep it fair and put him here at number five but he is so good that he could be in anybody's top three if you put this at number one i would wouldn't doubt you for a second. I think it's an aesthetically beautiful figure. It moves around great. It feels great in the hand. But again, it is just a repaint, so I didn't want to get too, too crazy with it. But I do like this Darby Allen a lot. He comes in at number five. It just speaks for itself. I love the way the face paint looks. I love the way the tattoos look. It's just, it's a beast. It is absolutely a beast. Everybody needs at least 12 Darby Allens in their collection. number four spot is going to be the ringside exclusive exploding barbed wire deathmatch Kenny Omega figure that came with the Moxley that you guys saw in the honorable mentions. I just like the Kenny a lot more, you know. I know that the Mox is just a repaint. This is kind of a repaint, but we have this brand new leg mold going on. I love the shirt. I love the blood and guts deal that we have going on, right? It's sort of a ringside staple with AEW and Jazzwares, how we get the bloody figures. I just love the shirt. I love the head sculpt, how it's got the bloody going on. I know the hair is a bit weird with the pattern and the blood soaked, and it may not have the most likeness to Kenny but I love it. I love the uniqueness of it. I love the pants going on. This is a really fun figure, man, and I, I really do want to grab a bunch of these. We'll see what comes of that, but I just love it. As a big Kenny Omega fan, as a lover of his, I love this figure. I think it's great. I love the taped up hands that you get. It's just one of those that makes it fun to collect. I know that it's kind of a bonus. It doesn't really count towards the figure, but the whole set in general, have you seen it? It's just insanity, and I love this figure. I like posing around and picking it up, even though I really don't have a usage for it at this exact moment maybe in the future wink wink this is a fun figure and i love it Coming in at number three, we have Powerhouse Hobbs from Unrivaled Series number nine. I love this figure. I like Hobbs a lot, and I enjoy this figure quite a bit. I do think that he probably could have been bigger. You know, I think that he could have been bigger in the thighs. I think he could have been better, bigger in the traps, just overall girth and mass of the figure, but I still like it a lot. I like the color scheme going on with the Taz, or Team Taz colorway. I love his boots and like the Booker T multi-strap look that he's got going on. I like his tape fist. I think the head sculpt's phenomenal, looks just like him, and I'm just looking for an excuse to get this this man in the 
fed. You know what I'm saying? He's just one of those guys that I enjoy posing around a lot. And if you guys do not have this figure, I highly suggest you get it. It's, it's just really fun. It's exciting to have in the hand and pose around. And just you guys know that feeling the hand is one of my highest qualities. And this one feels really good and he's fun to pose around. So Powerhouse Hobbs has to come in here. I really enjoy his work. I enjoy the guy's personality overall. And he's just a he's a he's powerhouse, man. He's powerhouse Hobbs, and he's here at number three in the top ten AEW figures of the year so far. Coming in at the number two spot is a guy that I really don't like that much. You know, I'm not a big Ricky Starks guy, but his figure looks like him. It captures his likeness. The attire is sweet. I love the way it feels in hand. It poses around nice. The head sculpt is damn near prefer perfection. I really don't know what else to say except this figure embodies Ricky Starks. You guys know that if a figure feels good in the hand, poses around well, embodies what the guy looks like in real life, it's going to be hard to top that. And that's what this does with Ricky Starks. Really fun figure. Figure, really creative figure. I love the tights. I think the bright silver paint or the bright metallic paint that they use for this like cyan or light blue. It's not teal. It's more of like a cyan color, but it still is sweet as hell, man. What a great looking figure overall. This is excellent. I love this, this Ricky Starks, even though I do not like Ricky Starks at all. And coming in at number one has to be the Unmatched Series 3 Brody Lee figure, man. This figure right here is so good. It really, really is. I love the way it feels in hand. I think it encaptures Brody Lee from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. The head sculpt's phenomenal. I love the gear here. I wish I had the Chase variant. I really do. I gotta get my hands on a Chase variant, you know, Brody Lee figure. Not only to keep men on car, but I want one for the loose collection, man. You know, it, it's such a beautiful piece. And this figure just feels phenomenal in the hand. The only doubt that I could have for it is the arm size, but that's kind of like an AEW thing. AEW figures just have small, skinny arms, which really does bother me. I wish that we could change that at some point. I don't know really how to do it because you don't get a lot of differentiation between the size of arms. It's either like tiny, super skinny, or like normal sized arms. You know what I'm saying? So I'd really like to see that happen, but the Brody Lee figure is, is beautiful, and every time I look at it, it just is it's phenomenal. It really is. I don't know if a figure will beat it this year. It probably will, you know. There, there are some great pieces coming soon. We will have to see, but this Brody Lee does stand above the rest at this moment, and there's a lot of great figures on this list, but I think if I wanted, if I could only have one figure out of this whole entire top 10, this would be the one, and it's not just because of the situation. I think that it feels great in hand. It poses around nice and all those different qualities, man, so Brody Lee comes in at number one, and I'd love to know down below what your top five, top 10 are of the year so far. 2022 has been immaculate for figures, and I'm sure that it's going to continue you to be with all the things we have on the pipeline and things coming soon man can't wait for it but we might do another top 10 maybe unrivaled or unmatched but we have to do a top 10 of 2022 when the year's over man but i'm getting out of here thank you guys so very much for watching i'd love to know what your favorite figure is from this year so far but let's get into our random shout out before we get out of here and this comment is going to go to grim Jow or xx grim Jow xx i really wish mattel and jazz waves would stop with the rubber jackets i get they are probably cheaper to make that way but i would be willing to pay a little extra if it meant getting cloth accessories and i think that is the case with me as well man you know i, I really would i'd say just cut rubber accessories out completely i'd say you know maybe outside of like a jericho jacket with spikes but people really would like to see cloth, man. They really would, and I think people would pay a, a premium price for the cloth accessories and goods like that. So maybe that's something that they will discuss in the future, but huge shout out to you for that comment. A lot of people agree, man. I had a lot of likes on there, so let me know what you guys think of that down below, but huge shout out to Grim there for the great comment, but I'm getting out of here, man. Have a blessed day. I'll see you guys next time, and uh, don't cross the line with all due respect. You cross the line.